When you're creating a process dependent business, yes, you write all of your processes, but it doesn't end there. Writing all of your processes basically puts you into a static environment. Next, what you have to do is you need to move into this, what we call the process development cycle. First of all, you begin to quantify or evaluate your processes. And then as you look at them, you might see where some processes could happen faster, easier, more profitably. So you make changes to those processes, you innovate them. And then as you innovate them, you roll them out to your team, you orchestrate those processes, you train the people that need them on the new way of doing things. So this is what we like to call the process development cycle. But before you get to the process development cycle, you've got to create a process dependent business. And a process dependent business is pretty simple to create. There's a five step plan. It, it usually begins with vision. And a lot of people often say, what's vision got to do with, with process implementation? But vision has a lot to do with process implementation. You need a vision to know where you're going. It also helps you develop the organizational structure of that future vision of that future department, say. And then what you begin to do is you define all of the processes that you would need in that future business or even the processes that you need now. And when I say process identification, I don't mean that you're actually writing all of your processes. You're simply walking through and naming all of the different processes that your department needs or that your company needs. And then you will link those processes that you've identified to boxes or roles on the organization chart. And you would link all of your employees to roles on that organization chart. And that's what we call complete functional accountability. Everything that has to happen in the business has now been defined, assigned to a role or a box, and an employee is accountable for completing that. And from that point forward, you're literally writing processes, deciding which are the most important processes to write, you're implementing them, you're monitoring their success, and then you're repeating that. And then finally, what really makes this happen is the touchstone process, because what makes touchstone unique is that we integrate people with positions and processes. In other words, we identify all of your positions, we identify all of your processes. And then, as I said a moment ago, we link those to the positions on your organization chart. And then we add your people and we link the people to those positions in the organization chart. So we integrate these three key components, positions, people and processes. And what this does, what's the, what this integration does is it makes the processes super easy to find. It makes absolute clarity of function so everybody truly understands their role what is expected of them and it clarifies the instructions on how to achieve that clarity and so that is the role here by integrating these three key pieces which is the touchstone software by following a process implementation plan identifying all of your processes getting everything linked up and then finally the process development cycle, quantifying your processes, innovating the changes, and then orchestrating those changes throughout the company.